All right, hey guys, hope you're doing great. Um, so we're doing something a little different here with 1-7. Um, you're going to see uh, me for part of it. You're going to see Mr. Noel for the other part. Um, but we're going to do this, guys, in case for some odd reason uh, we do end up going uh, remote and you're not here at school, we want to show you what we want you to do um, at home. So today is like a normal day one for us. We're going to go through all the examples, example one, two, three. We're going to go through the key concepts. Right? We're going to make you guys dangerous enough to where you understand 1, 7 is all about um, zero uh, exponents and negative exponents. So we're going to learn a little bit about them, and then we'll turn you guys loose. So you're going to find all this stuff on Schoology. Right? You're going to use this, the videos. You're going to use the checklist. Um, and and you know, our learning will still continue. Um, so with that, we're going to roll right into uh, example one. We're in here, so you guys should be in your workbooks. Right? At example one, we're going to go through it just like we usually do. All right, so let's see what we got. What do the zero exponent and negative exponent properties mean? Think about this question during the lesson. Markela is playing a card matching game with some classmates. Four matches have been made. It is Markela's turn, and she chooses three to the power of zero. She needs to know which card would complete her match. In three to the power of zero, which is the base? Select your answer. All right, so we've talked about, hey, who's the base, who's the exponent? So in this one, we're trying to figure out which number is the base. Everybody lock in your guess in three, two, one. Oh, man. Hopefully you guys all pick three. Begin by organizing the information in a table. We'll start with the largest number. So look for patterns here. 3 to the 4th power is equal to 81. And work down. Now you can look for a pattern. What relationship do you notice in the simplified form column? Alright, so if we're just looking at this column, right, what do we notice that's going... So it looks like, to me, these numbers keep getting smaller. Right? It looks like our powers also keep getting smaller. All right? So we're trying to figure out, right? She pulled that 3 to the 0 power. So if you can imagine me writing a 3 to the 0 here, I wonder, wonder what number uh, is going to end up down here. You guys want to do the activity? Sure. Why not? Okay. Oh, look, they already gave it away, guys. Uh, so here it is. So what's, what's happening? Um, as we keep losing one of these, we go from four to three. Remember, these are our powers. If we keep losing a power, right? These numbers keep getting smaller by that same power, or really multiple of three, right? 81 divided by three, this number. 27 divided by three. Nine divided by three. Three divided by three, not zero, guys. There you go. Okay? Uh, let's carry on and see what else they have to say. The pattern is that each number is the previous number divided by 3. I just told or you that. each number is one-third the previous number. As the exponent decreases by 1, the product is divided by 3. We can use the pattern to find 3 to the power of 0. 3 divided by 3 equals 1. So 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. The card Markela needs is one. Fantastic. All right. So, guys, there's what we're all about today. So, we're all about, hey, anything to the zero power, right? In this case, they're using the number three, the base of three. Anything to the zero power is not zero, as we would think. It's actually one. Okay? You could also use the quotient of powers property to solve the problem. When dividing two exponential expressions with the same base, subtract the exponents. 3 to the power of 3 minus 3 is equal to 3 to the power of 0. You also can write the quotient as a fraction. Expanding each exponential expression shows that the fraction is equivalent to 1. The zero exponent property states that a to the power of 0 equals 1 assuming a does not equal zero. And we get the same answer. Markela needs to find the one card. Nice job, Markela. All right, guys, so there's our, there's our formal 
definition that doesn't make sense to any of us, right? It's our zero exponent property or zero exponent rule. Any number, any number you can think of in the whole wide world raised to the power of zero is one, except, of course, this guy right here is zero. So the zero power cannot possibly be one, but you guys already knew that, okay? All right, so here we go. Moving on to the try it. So if you guys want to try this on your own, pause the video right now. Try it. All right? Unpause it when you're done. We'll see if you get them right. See if you get them wrong. Okay? Set pause it. Try it. Okay. Uh, let's tackle this first one. I got to be a marker. Noel's got the hot set up here. Maybe. There it is. All right. Negative 7 to the 0 power. Think long and hard. Yep, you got it. It's the number 1. 43 to the 0 power. Any guesses out there? It's like crickets. Come on, people. That's also 1. Yep. 1 to the 0 power. You sense a pattern here. Yep, this is uno and ooh, a decimal. Is a decimal raised to the 0 power still 1? You better believe it is, right? It is still 1. Okay? Here's the bad news. Don't think all of our problems are going to be this easy. Right, eventually they're going to throw these in with like our other rules, like our quotient rule and our product rule, and we're going to have to use part of it in conjunction with something else. So, um, anyway, that's what we got going on here. We're going to take a quick break like magic. Mr. Noll is going to appear, and we're going to get to example two. Ha! Big job. I'm still here. Good <laughs> <laughs> right? Let's do this part. I got so excited. Mr. Noel was ready. He's all geeked up, ready to go. All right. So why is 2 times 7 to the 0 power equal to 2? All right? Remember, think of order of operations, right? That says, hey, focus, pay attention on this part of it first, right? 7 to the 0 power. So remember, anything to the 0 power equal to 1. So this really turns into the number 1. If I multiply that number times 2... Right? Is this a true mathematical sentence here? Of course it is. Yeah. So this this is why this works. And really, guys, this is what I was after. Right? We're going to use this zero power rule right in conjunction with some other stuff in our questions. Okay. So Mr. Dole is going to pop in here in just a second. All right, my friends, I'm back. Okay. Um, Mr. Pricky took the easy example. Mr. Noel's got the harder one because you guys know Noel smarter than Pricky. So here we go. Example two is on what are called negative exponents. And we're going to take negative exponents and turn them into writing them as positive exponents. It'll all make sense here in a bit. Uh, if I can't figure it out, though, I'll have Mr. Fricky jump in here, help me out. So quick video here talking about negative exponents. Oh, no. you got to be a mouse. He's setting me up, everybody. Simplify the expression 4 to the third power divided by 4 to the 5th power. To begin, write the division problem as a fraction. Now, use the definition of exponents to rewrite the fraction. 4 to the 3rd power is equal to 4 times 4 times 4. That's good stuff. And 4 to the 5th power is equal to the product of 5 fourths. To simplify the fraction, remember that 4 fourths is equal to 1. The fraction is equal to 1 divided by 4 times 4, or 1 16th. Whoa. So, 4 to the 3rd power divided by 4 to the 5th power is equal to 1 16th. Wow. Interesting. I'm going to make sense of this. A quicker way to simplify the expression is to use the quotient of powers property. The quotient of 4 to the 3rd power and 4 to the 5th power is equal to 4 to the power of the quantity 3 minus 5, which is equal to 4 to the power of negative 2. The table shows some of the powers of 4. Now remember, earlier on in the video, they said 4 to the 3rd power divided by 4 to the 5th power. Okay, and I'm going to write it up here. 4 to the 3rd power divided by 4 to the 5th power. First part of the video equaled 1 over 16. Okay, so we've got to make a connection between this and this. And guess what? Four. 
Notice that as x increases by 1, 4 to the x power increases by a factor of 4. So, 4 to the power of negative 2 equals 1 16th. You can use the negative exponents property to simplify expressions with negative exponents. The negative exponent property states that a to the power of negative n is equal to 1 divided by a to the nth power. In this example, the property shows that 4 to the power of negative 2 is equal to 1 16th, which is 1 divided by 4 squared. All right, so folks, just to simplify this a little bit, for any negative exponent, so let's say we've got 5 to the negative second power, okay? We are going to rewrite it, and, and the rule up here, and it's cut off a little bit, it says a to the negative n power is equal to 1 over a to the positive n power, okay? So what we're going to do with any negative exponent, okay, is take that negative exponent, write it as a fraction, with the denominator being the same as its base, and then we're going to take the opposite of that exponent. So 5 to the negative second power is equal to 1 over 5 to the second power. 8 to the negative third power, write it as a fraction, keep the base as the denominator, take the opposite of that exponent, 1 over 8 to the third. Okay? Questions? No questions? I didn't think so. Where's your questions? That's right. There are no questions because I answered them all already. That's right. Okay? Move on. Try it section. Please excuse the interruption. Do we have all of the middle school... Don't interrupt me, Mr. Mon. ...golfers who can come down to oh. the college level. Middle school golfers. Yeah, baby. Middle school golfers who come down uh, Try to the office hallway for pictures. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry for that... Uh, rude interruption. Rude interruption. Back to negative powers, man. We're back to having some fun here. Back Come on. Negative exponents. Oh, now we got a phone call going on here. Hey, folks, if you want to pause the video, pause it for a second. Try these, unpause it, and you'll get your answers. I'm back. Here we go. Negative exponents. 8 to the negative second power, folks. Hey, write it as a fraction. 1, keep the base as the denominator. Take the opposite of that exponent. 1 over 8 to the second power. 2 to the negative fourth power, equivalent to 1 over 2 to the fourth power. C, 3 to the negative fifth, equivalent to 1 over 3 to the fifth. Now, folks, we could take this one step further to go 1 over 8 to the second power. This is equivalent. I'm going to change colors here. Okay? We could also say it's equivalent to 1 over 64. 8 to the second power, 8 times 8 gives you a product of 64. We can also say 1 over 2 to the 4th is equivalent to 1 over 16. 2 to the 4th power, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1 over 3 to the 5th, I'm going to have to ask Mr. Fricky on this. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, times 3 more is 243. Okay? So, once again, we can write them with positive exponents. We can also simplify these positive exponents to be equivalent fractions. That's example two, my friends, your introduction to negative exponents. Like magic, I'm back, folks. Uh, and we're on to example three. All right? So example three, kind of a carryover from example number two. Um, here's what we're dealing with. Write the expression one divided by three to the negative three power with a positive exponent. All right, so if you haven't figured out, we do not like negative exponents. So we want to write our answers with positive powers, right? This guy's all negative, kind of like Mr. Null, negative null we call him, okay? So we got to make this guy positive. How are we going to do that, right? Well, we're going to do that uh, with a little bit of what I like to call magic. Trickeration. Okay, so... A little um, bit of trickeration. Yeah, so here's, here's what we're going to do. Think about what we did before when we had, say, 4 to the negative 2 power, right? We wrote it as a fraction. We kept this in the denominator. We changed that power to its opposite, okay? This one's already in the denominator, and it's already negative, right? So we're going we're gonna to take this, right, 3 to the negative 3rd power, 
we're going to put it in the tumble machine, we're going to flip it upside down, right? So here's what's going to happen. This is going to be the same thing. And look, we could do this a super mathy way, and we could multiply by some reciprocals, and we could do all that, or you can just trust us. Do you trust us? Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to take this, right? We're going to we're going to flip our fraction upside down. So we're going to do this, right? So now this denominator moves up here. This power changes to its opposite. If you'd like to write it over one, you certainly can. But anything over one, guys, is just what? It's just this number here. So really, we're just going to say, hey, this is three to the third power. Wow. There you have it. You guys excited? You want me to do another one? Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's do another one, folks. Well, if um, you go to the... Uh, oh, yeah. We yeah, can hit the yeah, yeah, we got all kinds of stuff here. My bad. Here we go. All right. Uh, Watch this. He's going to hit try another one. Yeah, look, we got it right, guys. Congratulations. All right. Here we go. So now we've got 1 over 4 to the negative 10th power. Guess what? We can handle this one. Put it in the tumble machine. You like the tumble machine, huh? Tumble machine. All right. To the negative 10th power. First things we're going to do, everybody gets to trade spots. This is going to be 4 to the 10th power, right, over 1. Again, when this guy moves really up to the numerator, guys, we take its opposite power, right? And we can just say, hey, this is 4 to the 10th power. You guys picking up what we're putting down here? I think that they are, Mr. Holt. Okay. Did you get this one right? Be a mouse for me, my little friend. There you go. Yes, we got it right. Yes. Congratulations. You guys are doing so good. Would you like to try another one? Oh, this may never end. Too bad. We're going to do one more. Then we'll get out of here. Okay. Again, if you want to try this one on your own, you can. So this is 1 over 7 to the negative 4th power. Again, first thing we're going to do, right, we're going to take its reciprocal. Tumble machine. Bam. All right. Voila. Right, how do we know that these, that these are equivalent to each other, right? Because really, we haven't changed their meaning, folks. If you take 7 to the 4th power, you put it into your calculator, it spits out a number. If you take this... Weird looking fraction, 1 over 7 to the negative 4th power. Guess what? Still spits out the same number, right? So that's, we haven't changed the meaning of this number at all, right? This is just a number. I don't know what 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. It's some number, I don't know, big. Mr. Knoll can figure it out for you. Uh, anyway, guys, let's go to the try it on example 3. So while I'm getting there, you guys find your way there. So we're going to go to the try it for example 3. All right. Should be in your workbook. All right, again, there's that right there. Fantastic. Let's do a few of these. All right, so we've got A and B here. All right, letter A. We've got 1 over 5 to the negative third power. Again, we're going to rewrite this as 5 to the third power over 1, which is just going to be equal to 5 to the third power. I know this, this is also 125. If you don't believe me, you can take this 1 over 5 to the negative third power. It will give you 125 in your calculator. Okay? 2 to the 6th power, right? Sorry, 2 to the negative 6th power, right? Now we've got to deal with this one. Look, it's the end of the day. Guys, don't go anywhere. We ain't done yet. Nope, we're still going, right? So this will be 2 to the 6th power over 1, which just turns into 2 to the 6th power, okay? Um, so guys, that's our examples. Don't worry, the fun isn't over, right? We're still going to get into our normal other day one stuff. We're still going to get into our... Uh, key concepts. We're still going to probably get into our additional practice, all right? So stay tuned for those. Those will all be their own separate uh, videos. But great seeing you guys, and we will carry on with our day. All right, see you.